as hard as Ooh. Holy shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> Did you get that on camera? Hey, good morning. I'm Josh. This is Track Daily. Uh, a couple of months back, I took my former neighbor Justin's C6 Z06 Corvette out on the track, uh, which was a lot of fun. The car is really incredible in terms of power, but the stock brakes couldn't really hold up to the, the track abuse and they overheated and uh, we almost had an incident uh, and had to kind of cut the, the testing short. So unfortunately, I didn't put in a great lap time. So today we are going to put new pads, rotors, and brake fluid in the car, hopefully to get it ready for the next track outing. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, haven't seen you in a while. Do you always have to drive it with no shoes on? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have shoes that are like thinner, but... That's funny. I can drive, I can't, I can't use a clutch unless I have like racing shoes. We got the... The wheel's off, obviously, so now it's time to change the pads and rotors. So we just got to get the calipers loosened. All right, so I'm just uh, pushing in the pistons by hand. Uh, we opened up the, or at least loosened the master cylinder reservoir so that uh, it'll be easier. There won't be any pressure in there. All right, so. Carbo tank. What did we do? XP tens in the front, XP eights in the rear. One solid pad. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. That from the from the factory, you get one little padlet per piston. It seems like with the single pad, you end up with more surface area. It's probably not enough to make a gigantic difference, but then. You were already, you made it a good way through <clears throat> these and then look how much meat is on these new ones compared to these like significant amount, like it seems like double. Yeah, that's only, what, it's like 2,000 miles? Man, that's crazy. You went through that much pad in 2,000 miles? And we probably ate a ton of it with that one track outing. You know, yeah. street pad is not gonna hold up on the, the track for very long. There's like a few different parts of these clips that I guess we need to make sure get lined up. Oh, okay, yeah, can you see in there like they, they're definitely doing a lot. They're only on the bottom, so if I kind of come in from the top. This is the gap for life. <laughs> okay, that wasn't bad. So now we'll do the other one. All right, uh, so we're about to put the, the rotor on and we noticed that the, the rotors appear to be directional. So you can see that, you know, these veins are angled. So if we put them on, then the veins are, are basically pointed that way. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. So they're like scooping up the air as they turn forward. But the thing is, the other rotor that we got is exactly the same. So if we put it on that side, then the veins are pointing backwards. So we didn't like that. We thought, oh, maybe we got, you know, like they mistakenly sent us two of the same one, but here's the thing. Let's go over and look at, at the other side. So this is the one that, that we took off of the front driver's side. So faces forward to scoop them up. Oh wait, no, uh, the way that it was on would face backwards and not scoop up, but these are facing forward. So ultimately, like unless whoever put these on, like if these aren't the factory rotors and somebody put them on and ran into the same problem we did, we've got directional rotors, but you put them on facing one way on one side and the other way on the other side, which is strange, but we're just gonna roll with it because that's what we got, right? All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm guessing the mass airflow sensor cleaner is almost as good as brake cleaner in terms of getting... Getting grease off? We'll just turn them blue as soon as as soon as we you know you go get them hot. We'll yeah, turn them blue we're anyway. gonna cook off whatever was on there anyway. All right, so right away Corvette Forum back in 2012, directional veins. Yeah.
Yeah, the OEC606 rotors are all left side rotors. That's funny. Okay, so that confirms what we <laughs> discovered. So. Onward and upward. So... Wait, you're gonna have to push those pads back. I already pushed them back. So I, I manually pushed the, uh, the pistons all the way in. So that's as far as those pads are gonna go. We can confirm that just by seeing if they'll fit on. All right, Justin's right. I need to get a couple more millimeters out of these guys. Got Josh and those, those strong hands. <laughs> Do a lot of grip exercises. Types on the computer all day. Yeah. Right there. I think we. What? No. We got it. Okay. Milwaukee, we need a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do it to about like 70 foot pounds. You might be wondering how I'm gonna know. Oh, yep, that was it. Boom. All right. Nice, that was easy. So we'll go do the same thing on the other side. These are tow hooks for the Miata. I realized you can't like push 100% if you're afraid that your bumper is going to get ripped off when you're getting towed out of the <laughs> sand. So I need tow hooks to really unlock my driving car. <laughs> Did you end up in the sand? I have not yet. I've never had a, a major off. The, the only time I went completely off track was in that barber race that we did, uh, what was that, December? Yeah. And um, the reason I went off was uh, uh, there was oil on the track. Oh, So yeah, that's terrifying. Ha ha! Get it? Yeah, I got it. Did I get it? Of course I got it. Come on. <laughs> this is like my third Corvette brake job. Hey. <laughs> All right. Let's see if. <laughs> knocking it out. We do want to. That went right in there. Clean off these uh, these Loctite specials. Yeah, so we've got Loctite blue on here and the theory is that if we get it hot enough it's gonna literally burn off right? Right. And then we just wipe it out with a wire brush. And I don't have a lever. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm gonna try not to like send it flying into my own eyes. See? It's coming right out. Yeah. Less work. I like it. Let's go do a barber school. Man, barber. That the like we saw the Porsches run in there. Yeah. It looked looked expensive, but it looked fun. <laughs> Nice, okay. Well, I learned something about the power of fire versus Loctite. This old guy, when, uh, when I was younger, we go up to Lanier Raceway. Uh huh. And he had this joke, and he would go, You ever seen a uh, match burn twice? I don't get and he it. play the joke like all the time. 
on everybody. He, he probably did that to me like freaking, I don't know, 10 times. That was his thing? That was his thing. That one joke? So That one joke. So uh, I, I don't get it. Like, what, how, what would he do then? He would light, he would, uh, light a match. Okay. And then he goes, look, it's burning. And then he'd blow it out, and then he would touch you with it, and he'd go... <laughs> no, I get it. Nice. <laughs> so. Alright. That is the pads and rotors all done. Uh, so now we are going to uh, do the fluid. So I've got this motive power bleeder. Now, Justin's here, so theoretically, like, you could be in the car pumping the brake and we wouldn't need this. Right. Um, but this makes it a one-man job, and I've just gotten kind of used to to doing it this way, so that's how we're going to do it, and that way you're free to run the camera. So, one thing that I read recently was the idea of pumping the brakes a few times with the car off so that there's no more assist coming from the booster. I don't know if that matters when you're doing uh, power bleeding, but we'll do it anyway. All right, so now the, the pedal is hard. I probably should have done that a little more slowly because I forgot that the, uh, the cap is off, but we're cool. All right. Just made a mess. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so one other thing that I like to do is take a shop towel, cut a little uh, hole in it, and then put that around your uh, your master cylinder. That way, if you get any drips or drops, um, it's not going to get all around in your in your leaf collection that you have here. Um, also, the next thing that I like to do is use a syringe and remove all of the old fluid that's in the, the reservoir here. Yeah, so look how, I mean, that's so black. Look at that. So we're just going to get as much of this out as we can. And then we're going to refill this reservoir with fresh fluid and then we're going to flush the whole system from the calipers. We're going to put in the AMSOIL.4 racing fluid. Should we talk um, about how organized you are? <laughs> not that organized. I, I'm organized when it's easy for me to be organized. Um, so basically the idea is we're gonna, we're gonna fill up the reservoir again because we emptied it. Uh, then we're gonna use the, the power bleeder to apply air pressure to it. That way when we crack open the bleeders, it's just gonna push, uh, the fluid out. Um, and so we need to make sure that we don't let the, uh, the reservoir get empty. Okay. All right, so basically this is 12 ounces and that's exactly what the, the reservoir holds. So we got the power bleeder here and you can buy it. So I've got a separate attachment for this for Corvette that also works with other makes and models. You know, it just has to do with the type of, uh, of master cylinder it has. For some reason having that towel on there makes it seem like we're doing surgery on it. <laughs> Um, so the mistake that I've made in the past is to put this on without having this, this rubber gasket in there. Why not? Why, why didn't you have the rubber gasket in there? Just difficult? Because I forgot, I think. So now what, and the, the other mistake that I made before was to fill this up with brake fluid so that it, the fluid would just get pumped into the reservoir and replace the fluid that was being, uh, was being pushed out. Yeah. If you don't have a good seal, guess what happens to the brake fluid that's in there? It shoots all over your engine bay. So if we have a good seal, we're gonna be able to start building pressure. And sure enough, we're building pressure. I go to like, what is it? About 15 or 20 
You don't want to go too high because then you can, you know, overwhelm the seal that you've got with the master. Yeah. But if you go too low, then the process takes too long. And remember, we're going to have to redo this pumping process every time we add fluid to the system. All right, so we're at 15. We'll leave that there like that. Now the, the wisdom is, so you've got a brake line running to every caliper. Yeah. You want to start with the furthest run and then work around until you're at the closest one. So it stands to reason that the closest run is going to be the driver's side front and the longest run is going to be the passenger side rear. So that's where we're going to start is the passenger side rear. The name brand. Oh yeah? Yeah, we got the we got the Fuji. Oh, the water. <laughs> Trying to get sponsored by the Fiji. No. Fiji, Fuji. Fuji is a camera brand. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Basically, if this goes well, it's super easy, and if it goes poorly, you have brake fluid everywhere, and it's really not fun. Uh, <laughs> it's cold, so like all the plastic yeah. is kind of brittle. Now, one trick that, that I've seen people do is that they um, they pre-fill the bottom with fluid so that air can't get back, sucked back up into the system. But I don't know why we're worried that air is going to get sucked back into the system because we're pushing it out. So look at that. We see yeah. particulates and stuff coming in through there. Oh, and I was paying attention to the wrong thing. I let it... Uh, slip off okay so we're gonna let this run so you see it filling up there and it looks kind of like coffee yeah we want it to run until the quality of the fluid coming out starts to look more like the fresh stuff that we put in we know we've got like a pint in the reservoir to work with and so you want to think kind of about like we don't want to run the entire pint through a single break we just want the entire line to be flushed and it's not the worst thing i've ever seen but it's very dark right it's like i would say it's yeah. kind of coffee colored and we know that the fresh fluid is amber colored and so we're kind of looking for in the tube as it's dropping in for that amber color mm -hmm. and this stuff is starting to look a lot better so that probably is fresh fluid at that point so Bang. Like I said, I don't think we need to do this side for as long. That's already looking clear. So I'll close that. So why don't we take a look real quick and just see if we can tell. So the reservoir to me doesn't look like it's come down that far. So I think, and you know, if you, you can tell too, like we obviously didn't put anywhere near a pint of fluid in there yet. Yeah. So I think we're, I think we're good with continuing on for the the rear um, before we put more fluid in the reservoir. So that's what we're going to do. It's weird, like the inside has a cap and the, in, the outside does not. Yeah, on both sides. You would think that they probably both came with caps, but I don't know. That's weird. What? Fluid is not shooting up through. There's a little bit leaking out here. Let me, it's already closed it off again. Let me, uh, let me look at what our PSI is like on that. It's about the same. Dropped a couple pounds. Big difference. But when I cracked that thing open, it did not start flowing out the way I would have expected it to. Maybe it's a lot lower than we realized. No, because I mean there there would still be fluid in the in the thing. I don't mind checking to make sure. But th if you think about, it, we put an entire pint in, and this is how much we've taken out. Oh yeah. You know, so there's no way that um, that the reservoir is low. Uh, but what's odd is a little bit of fluid came out at the bottom, but you know we we could have a bad bleed screw like that happens. Yeah. So the the fluid is not. The hole's not open. Right. And so what you 
can do then is take the bleed screw all the way out yeah. and clean it. But right now we got so much pressure on the system that that would lead to bad stuff happening. So what we're gonna do is um, re release the, the pressure. You never wanna release the pressure here. You wanna do it here. Oh yeah. Cause you don't wanna shoot brake fluid everywhere. All right, so now we're not pressurized anymore. And when we seal this back up, that should make it harder for the fluid to just come squirting out, but it is gonna come out of that that thing and that's where it's nice that we've got the uh the drip tray in place so we're just going to take this guy all the way out and see if we see like an obstruction or something see how it's all rusty down here yeah that's why so fluid wasn't being allowed to, to travel out of there so we're going to go and use like a uh, paper clip and see if we can like get that cleaned out. Here's my special cleaning stuff out paper clip. And I really don't want to put my mouth on this to blow through it and make sure it's unobstructed. You got to. That's that's part of the game. I just feel like that's like giving yourself <laughs> cancer on purpose. <laughs> yeah, so you see it's just from the, the gravity of the system it's it's leaking right. uh, but not real fast. Wait your paper clips in there. Is it? Almost lost it. You don't want to lose that paper I've clip. used that paper clip for probably five different similar jobs at this point. So now we repressurize and see if uh, see if it's going to flow through that. This is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really the reason. Well, once you got married, you didn't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> That's what they tell you. <laughs> Shit. Didn't it work? No. Still not flowing. Okay, I'm probably putting it in upside down is probably not the best. All right. <laughs> we'll edit that part out. But, uh, the... <laughs> Girls, come here. Come here. I mean, I'm gonna lace them out here, please. She's yelling about me. About you stealing M&M's? Let me smell your breath. Come here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Elise, you're sitting in time out. Right here. No, I want to be outside. Have a seat. No, I don't want to be I'm going to count up to three. No. One. Five. I can't believe you would have a meltdown in front of a guest. All I want to do is pump up my power bleeder. <laughs> Can you group all the uh, times you pump the powder bleeder to, uh, together? <laughs> <laughs> One big long montage. Come on! Nope. I think we can just bleed it from the other side. Okay, so the stuff coming out of that line is still brownish, but I can actually see it already starting to improve. Yeah, it's happening pretty quickly. Yeah, because really you think about like how it's just a line that's running, you know, straight up there. It's not, doesn't have that much volume in the line itself. Look at that. Holy crap. Look how dark that is. And you can see like particulates in it that was definitely definitely well past due yeah and one thing that i'm not sure of with these is how you access the fluid that's in the abs system yeah um some people i think say to uh flush it and then go out and engage the abs and yeah. then flush it again okay so now it's looking good Wait, what's the difference between the brakes, the fluid, and the, um... Well, apparently, like, it, the the ABS system isn't, uh, like, that, that fluid isn't going to flow. 
while you're bleeding it because there's like a valve that's shut or something until the ABS engages. Mm. I'm not 100% certain of that. that. That could be wrong, but I remember reading something like that about the, uh, the C5. Okay, that wasn't, yeah, there's still a fair bit of nasty. Flip it then very quickly. But very quickly, yeah. yeah that looks good. It clears up. Something terrible is certainly about to happen because I've never had a brake shop go this smoothly, but maybe <laughs> the more I do it, the better I get at avoiding the, the common pitfalls. Uh-oh. Yeah, all right, so this one appears to not want to flow too. Yeah, so maybe that's what happens is water gets into the top of the nipple because it's not covered with a cap like that one on the rear. Mm -hmm. You know, so water gets in there and then it rusts it from the inside. Yeah. Ooh, nasty. So all we need to do now is fill the reservoir the rest of the way. I think two pints of it is probably enough to fully do the job. I think we could have conserved some if we hadn't had that one nipple open for so long and then i guess the other lesson learned is having those caps on them is important because otherwise it makes sense now that water yeah. gets into them and then uh rusts them from the inside yeah water just sits there but they need to be pointing up so that air bubbles can be bled out of them so that's the that's kind of the design of the system i guess the brake install so we're about to go bed them in wait did you pump the brakes i uh, i pumped them earlier <laughs> just now yeah i didn't have any <laughs> didn't like... have any assist for a second <laughs> roll into the neighbor's yard yeah. so there's there's no bite to the brakes yet um you know what we're doing with bedding them in is we're taking the pads and we're getting them really hot so that they transfer a layer of material onto the rotors so we've got new rotors new pads and right now it's like there's pad material and then there's just a steel from the rotor and you get a little bit of friction between them when you clamp the brakes but once you kind of melt a layer of pad onto the rotors the rotors will look blue after that uh, so you can tell that that the process is done and then you'll get this really nice grab right from the right from the get-go so we've got Carbotech XP10s on the front and XP8s on the rear. So the XP8s aren't quite as, as grabby as the 10s, and so the idea is we don't want to accidentally introduce too much rear bias into the system um, because you don't want your rears to lock up under braking. Um, and what Carbotech says you should do is you should really bed these in on, on a track because they're a track-focused pad. But track's not open today, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go out on the street and do a similar process. Uh, basically, we wanna get them really hot, and then we wanna be driving for about half an hour to let them cool down without using them at all. Uh, and luckily, you know, the, there's a section of like, I forget, between 52 and 53, I can never remember which is which, but we can like drive a good long section without uh, having to use the brakes at all. And, uh, let them cool off and then we, we should be good to go. And of course we wanna, well this has ABS so we don't have to worry about flat spotting the tires. Nice thing about ABS car in terms of bedding in the brakes is you can just jam on it as hard as, holy, holy shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> Did you get that on camera? <laughs> I don't know. Oh shit, watch out the, uh, I forgot to strap down the gym, my gym bag. I like I didn't even process what was happening because I didn't even, I was like wait is she on this side <laughs> and she had no idea even as she passed us she was just like this is a pretty narrow street that like <laughs> holy sh ah that's a case where it would have been better for the brakes to have already been bedded because I jammed on it hard and we only kind of like slow down a little bit 
So what are you gonna do? You gonna ride your brakes? No. So what they what they want you to do is progressively uh, start slow. So you want to build up temperature in the brake. So you would start going maybe uh, 30 or 40 miles an hour like we are now. Come almost all the way to a stop and then start going again. Don't come to a complete stop because you never want, once the rotors are hot, you don't want the pads to be sitting in contact with one part of the hot rotor for any period of time. So you just slow down to close to a stop and then you get going again. And those initial stops are just building up initial temperature because the, everything is cold right now um, and doing three to five of those will start to bring them up to like operating temperature and then uh, the real ones that are going to actually transfer that material we want to be going like 150 to 175 miles an hour not really <laughs> like si <laughs> 60 or 70 should be fine Race myself. Yeah. I, my whole goal is to catch you out, <laughs> surprise you with it. <laughs> Alright, so let's just roll at a slow speed see if we can. No, I smell some hot. Do you smell that? Yeah, I smell. It smells like a clutch. Yeah, I smell it. We'll do one, one more from the fire speed. Yeah. So now we need the whole thing to cool down. So we're gonna. Fortunately, there is one stop sign on the way that we're going, but we'll just we'll roll through it. Um, actually, two stop signs. But we should have like plenty of, of room. We'll, we'll go to that roundabout and then come back past the track, and that should give it enough time to fully cool off. Tell you what, how long has it been since I took this out on the track? Like two months? It's been two months? Has it? Well, when was it? Was it November? I guess it was November. Yeah, December kind of flew by. I can't remember exactly when it was, but uh, you know, it, yeah, I think it was like right around Thanksgiving, somewhere yeah. in that time frame. So uh, I I have not like stopped thinking about how much fun this car was to just <laughs> drive around on the street. I I am finding myself like, yeah. You know, have you ever gotten into that mindset where you're like thinking that you want something and then you start like <laughs> trying to figure out ways to get it? Yes. That's how yes, yes, my I'll brain, the direction my brain is starting to go with the C6 Z06. Such a fun car to drive. Man, that lady. That lady terrified you. I was in Calvary I was like. Well, that's what worried is like I got I was you know I was thinking about what I was saying, and then I, I was thinking about what I've, you were saying. I've driven in and out of that neighborhood a thousand times, several thousand times. I've never had somebody on a, the one-way section just driving right at me. And so my brain didn't even know to be concerned, right? It's just like, right. what What could that be? But that's how, I've, I've had that happen a couple of times. I can see how people do that, especially if they've never been in there before. But what did she think that, the, that she thought that was just another road? Like a different, <laughs> man. It's always older people. Yeah, but she wasn't that old. She looked like she was maybe 50. Yeah, she was like 50. You're, you're only saying that because you turned 40 uh, two I'm, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 50. She's, a, she's pretty young, right? Like, 50 is still young. I don't know. I mean, like, if it was like a 70-something-year-old person, an elderly person. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, if you see an elderly person driving and they do something super dangerous, you're like, why are you still driving, right? <laughs> so that's also kind of no excuse. All right, let's... Can downshift to a stop. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Don't rev it, and it'll 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 slow down more. Oh, that's true. Just just kind of transition in. Yeah, let the car. 
car slows down. How's that? Zero brakes. Perfect. I didn't thoroughly check for a cop in that parking lot. But <laughs> what, all you do is you say, sir, we're making a YouTube video. We're betting in the brakes and we can't touch the brakes. You understand, We're trying right? to prove a point. We're trying yeah. to prove a point. Pulls you over and you just let it coast up. The hill. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sir, I couldn't use the brakes. I couldn't use the brakes. Huh? Yeah, you you making the top go all the way down. <laughs> My grandfather, he was driving. He was driving to our house, and he uh, he didn't turn on his he he turned off his hearing aid when he got or before he got in the car okay. when he got in the car or whatever and so he just couldn't hear shit you know so he's driving to my parents house i'm you know like i'm a kid and as my grandfather's pulling up there's six cop cars chasing <laughs> he's evading the police he has no idea he pulls in our driveway with six six police cars following him into our driveway blocking our house in my dad runs out. He's like, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And your grandfather's completely oblivious. <laughs> Grandfather gets out. He's like, "What's going on?" And he goes, "Oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me turn my hearing aid on." <laughs> I I check my mirrors a lot. You know? I check my mirrors a lot. But he was doing like 90 in a 45, <laughs> and then he. Uh, and then he pulls into our neighborhood, pulls into my, pulls in our house with all these cop cars. And the cop said, literally, like, this guy is not stopping. So that's why there was right, multiple right, right. cop yeah. cars following. Yeah. And he, once he got on the back streets, like, it was like a four-lane highway where, where, where he got caught speeding. Uh -huh. But then when he got on the side streets, he was obeying all the speed laws. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. wasn't, he was stopping for stop signs, you know, but he just wasn't stopping long enough for the cop to catch him. That's so funny. <laughs> the cops like, uh cops are probably all jacked up on adrenaline, like oh, man. thinking they were about to pounce on this guy. <laughs> My grandfather gets out and he's like, I have no idea what you're here for. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we just got back from bedding in the, the new pads and rotors, so let's take a look and see how we did. So hopefully the camera kind of picks it up. There's definitely a blue hue uh, that you can see right in here. Uh, so I think that means that we got the job done. Let's look at the rear too and see if that got a similar effect. Not as pronounced, but you can definitely see a difference between uh, the kind of outer ring here where the pad contacts it and the inner part where it's the original silver. So yeah, I think we I think we yeah, got I think her done. Did a good job. I think you'll you'll find that like they're they're gonna work best once they really get up to temperature, but um, you know, they should be should be decent for street use, but they're definitely gonna be killer on the track now. Uh, so that's it. We uh, you know it ended up being kind of the entire afternoon to do the whole thing, um, but that's all right. Uh, we didn't run into any mishaps, so that's the, the important thing. It all kind of all kind of worked the way we expected. So I think that's going to wrap it up. It was fun to to be able to drive the car again and experience the raw fury of the LS7. That's weird. Uh, I don't know if you, you caught get, that, did, but did you get that on tape? Nicole discovered a pile of dog turds and seems to be blaming me for it. I don't know. Why, I don't know who else would scrape up dog turds from the driveway and just dump them in a pile over in the yard. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, all right, I think that's probably gonna do it for today. The, the car is definitely ready to, to go back to the track. It would do even better probably on stickier tires, but um, I'm certainly curious just to see what kind of difference the brakes make. So we'll discuss that offline and, and see what happens. But uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. Thanks to Justin for letting me drive the car. See you next time.